Welcome to another episode of Brain Rich Podcast. I'm here today with Anna, the founder of Zenimo. Zenimo is a meditation device designed for kids and adults. It's a screen free. It doesn't have any screens on it. It's very accessible for kids. And it's a beautiful thing to use, which you learned today on our podcast. So stay tuned. In the age dominated by screens, what inspired you to create a screen free meditation device? That's a great question and one of my favorite because it sets us apart from other mindfulness companies. And the core reason that I started it was you can't deny where we're at with technology and its importance and the capabilities that it does give us and children. However, we have not learned because it's all very sudden. We're now just seeing the ramifications of what screens are doing, especially to developing minds. And so for me, honestly, why I started the company was I was looking for a solution for my own children. Everything that I was finding required some sort of device. If there was any autonomy in it at all, it required me to hand them a phone or a tablet or something like that. And for me personally, and this is before I really did a lot of research on it, it, when I pick up my phone, I don't feel good. There, there's, It is so rare that you pick up your phone and you're like, Oh, excellent news from this notification. This made me feel fantastic. I mean, rarely, at best, it's benign. And worst case, your your house is on fire, whatever it is. But they're, they're, as soon as you open up your phone, you're hit with either cortisol, you're hit with adrenaline, or you're hit with dopamine. And none of those hormones are calm down hormones. Personally, when I would go into a meditation app and listen, like I will never frown upon meditation apps. I think the fact that we have access to them on a device that we're already carrying around all the time makes it extremely accessible. If that works for you, that's great. Um, again, just on a personal level, I felt like I was starting at a deficit when I would start my meditation practice. And I couldn't imagine now handing it to my two-year-old child and trying to get them to calm down the very last thing a kid's going to do is stay in a meditation. If you give them free reign of a phone, I mean, these things are super cool. I totally get it, but they're just not really conducive to a meditation practice. And so for me, I selfishly made the product for myself and for... And I, I just want to add, when I met you first on the exhibition and when I first saw this device, like, oh my God, this is what I need because I'm on the same page. I'm a mom and I do want my kids to kind of learn the meditation and it's amazing for brain development to calm themselves, uh, calm down. I like to do meditation myself. They see me doing it, but I'm an adult. I can control myself when I'm on the phone, like listening to meditation. I know I'm going to meditation, but for kids, as you said, you give them phone and it's such a temptation be between going to check out some games or something like that. I stay away from giving them phone, my phone for those reasons. But once I saw the device, I'm like, oh my God, there is no screen. There is just a very simple buttons they have to press and they can just go in and listen to their meditation. I was like, oh my God, I was instantly hit by that. So that, that was great. Oh, yeah, that's... And another you. thing I just want to say, the oh. feel of the device as well. It's very smooth and it's a very soft feeling to the touch as well. Oh, thank you so much. I think that the screen free element of it offers is a, just a, a, a pause in the screen use. And I think, especially as I'm touring around and seeing schools, it's shocking how much of even the school day is on screens. They're either on tablets or they're projecting something. There's very little break. I have even been to schools where lunchtime the children are on tablets. And so the idea that I can give a break, even if it's three minutes, I want to be a part of that in the day and taking a break from that. That's another reason why I think our device works, especially in the home and in school and medical settings. It's great. It leads me to a second question, which you touched up a little bit, but can expand as far as your story, right? So every great innovation has a story. And can you share your journey, how you started with Zenimal and what led you to create this product? Sure. I started Zenimal Really, because at a very early age, around four years old, I started having unexplained panic attacks. It made my early childhood years very challenging. And, you know, thankfully, I had really incredible parents. They were very resourceful. We lived in a really small town, but they found a clinical psychologist. 
Dr. Tina Fleshman. And over the course of several months, I would go once or twice a week. And she taught me how to control my breath, relax my body. And then I would visualize this really safe, amazing place. We developed this over the course of several months. I was able to finally do it on my own. And then I could also gain enough awareness before the full panic attack came in, recognizing the symptoms of coming on. For me, it was like a little bubble in my throat. And I knew, okay, I need to go find a spot. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to relax my body. And I had this whole ritual. But it took a lot of resources, time and money. There was also this element that I felt different from other kids having to go do this after school or whatever. It, I certainly was the only kid that I knew that was in therapy. And I, I hope today that's quite different. But at the time, it was pretty rare to have that opportunity. But it changed my life forever. It, it reversed the course of panic attacks. And then when I was about 17, I broke my back and my neck and again, turned to that to recover from the brain injury portion of that and just coping with chronic pain and things like that. And then through college, it's all meditation's always been with me through my life. And I, it didn't really occur to me to a part of my career. You know, most parents, especially early on when you're a mom and you're in those hormonal stages, you start to get a little anxiety of like, what if my kid has this thing and they're suffering and I don't have a solution for them and what am I going to do? And I thought, what if my daughter has anxiety? What am I going to do? I would like a plan now. I started looking around and I found so many, many meditation apps, which is really wonderful, making it extremely accessible. But I could not imagine handing my little toddler a phone and saying, please go calm down. I was in my 30s and the device didn't do it to me. I started it for them and it was pretty slow in the beginning. I decided I really wanted to make it something I was proud of and it was something I wanted to do on my own. There was a lot of learnings. And then in 2018, my son, my second kid was just over a year old and I had my daughter who was two and a half and my dad was hospitalized very suddenly and we went to see him in the hospital, sitting with him in the ICU room was definitely one of the worst days of my life. But in that moment, recognizing and looking around that this was not a unique situation, you know, thousands of people, tens of thousands, you know, people walk into that exact same situation every second of the day. And it's incredibly painful and having that experience was life altering. And so my stepmom said he really likes the meditations that you started to record for Zenimal. Maybe just start playing them. A lot of the meditations are, are my voice. That was something that I brought to the table. I was in voiceover before I started the company and there was something meaningful behind it. And we started playing them and his heart rate came down and the nurses and the doctors in the room would all come in and take these big collective breaths together and the entire energy shifted. And we had this really amazing hour with my dad where we were able to just hold his hand and breathe and say the things that we wanted to say from our heart and express gratitude. It was a gift that I knew that I wanted to give every single person that was willing to take it. It started off just for children, but in that moment, I knew that it was so much bigger than that. And we lost my dad that night. And I think it was so instantaneous, so surprised that your own heart doesn't stop. But as soon as mine didn't, I was full force into wanting to do this for the rest of my life and making this my life mission to give this opportunity and these resources to as many people as I possibly can in a way that I think is the most effective way for a human body and soul and mind and heart. So that's kind of the story of I, I have a bump, seriously. It's such a touching oh. story. Uh, every experience you have leads you to something else, and I'm pretty sure your dad was so grateful for that type of recollection of all the memories and being there with you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm really I'm, lucky. <laughs> I'm a very sensitive person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you for that. So many founders like, are very sensitive, empathetic people. And I think that's what makes us really good at what we do is that we are a little bit more in touch with other human beings. And so it is one of my favorite parts is bonding with other entrepreneurs because we are kind of cut from the same cloth and everyone's got a story and, and I know that yours is so beautiful too and sharing that and I think empowering others who also have stories it's very challenging being a human yeah. being it's a quirky experience and there has to be a, a lot of acceptance of experiences and a lot of reframing of them 
to cope. I think a lot of the times everyone's experience varies drastically and, and some are more severe if you want to label it that. Less pleasant, I guess, is a better way than good and bad than others. Adversity reveals character. I don't think it builds it. I really think it makes us stronger. It just shows you who you are and what you're capable of. So I feel fortunate that I got that gift relatively early on in life and that I'm able to share that with. Yeah, so thank it's, you. it's amazing, especially early on. Why I'm such a big believer of spending a lot of time with your kids at such an early age. I understand everyone has different situation. People have to work and they don't have the opportunity sometimes to spend a lot of time with the kids. But especially early on, kids, they just suck up everything around them. And you are the person who can provide the most care for your kids. And I think your early exposure to meditation it indoctrinated you a little bit, led you to this path. You were exposed to it early on to make you feel good. Yeah. And that feeling translated through your whole life. That's amazing. That's truly, yeah. truly yeah. really cool. You oh, did. Thank you. You did. So you did the voiceovers for yeah. meditations. That's amazing. You do have a really nice voice. Oh, you're so sweet. I was a theater and business major and... This is the culmination of all of those experiences. Looking back on my days in voiceover and doing theater and things like that. And I had a meeting yesterday with somebody and they said, how did you become capable of t tolerating the uh, challenges of being an entrepreneur? And I said, I, I really think that I was groomed for it in my 20s and early 30s with a lot of rejection, a lot of no, a lot of people saying, you know, I don't believe in you. And you learn to believe in yourself enough to get through and to keep going and persevering. And so I think that is a huge gift. You know, at the moment, I could look back and be like, well, this is not pleasant, right? Like, this has been a lot of no's and people telling me I can't do what I want to do. I love doing this and they're saying I can't do it. But I think that's so much of being a, a founder and, and to a certain extent being a parent as well. You have to have a, a ton of resilience, even if you have happy and healthy children, there's still challenges that come along. But if you're struggling with neurodivergence or differently abled people, it requires just so much resilience is, is my point, I guess. It kind of a bit of a deviation and a rabbit hole here, but just acknowledging how strong people really are when they're put to the test, I think is, is such a beautiful thing. It's one of my favorite things to learn about people. I enjoyed this podcast. There are so many good oh, things. Oh, thank you. Do enjoy. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Could you explain the different types of meditation and specific benefits to that type of meditation? Absolutely. The beautiful thing about mindfulness is it's not necessarily a one size fits all, but there's an option for all. What I really wanted to do when we started the idea of Mole was I wanted to build an umbrella where most people could stand under. Mm. There's nine core methods, categories I resonated with, and also my children did as well. The first one is stillness. That meditation typically is really just grounding into your body. It's learning to be still. It's so difficult to be still physically and mentally. That really grows that strength. One of the benefits certainly is improved focus. Sleep will always be improved pretty much throughout most categories because you're decreasing anxiety and improving better hormones. Next would be the breath meditation. That's always our shortest meditation. And that's the most simple, different sort of strategies for breathing. But really, we take for granted because it's an automatic thing for our body to do is to breathe. So we don't really think about it a lot. But the importance of focusing on your breath and taking deep, nice, beautiful, deep, breaths when most of the day we're breathing pretty shallow, which is not allowing enough oxygen. It's not stimulating that vagus nerve in order for us to feel calm and to feel safe and that we're not being chased by something or threatened or in a dangerous situation. Then the next one is relaxation. So that's typically like a body scan. We have to be very, very careful with mindfulness or meditation practice with people that are trauma sensitive because it can actually make it worse. And there is a sense of responsibility, certainly, that they have in that. But almost always a body scan is a very safe place to start with people. It's just being in your body. It's feeling your body. It's being aware of what your body feels like and then trying to relax typically each individual part one at a time. Highly effective for most people. Sleep meditation is obviously the favorite. 
And that's the meditation that I learned early on is just getting control of the breath. It's relaxing the body. And then it's visualizing your happy place, your safe place, a pretty safe approach to meditation. And then we have gratitude. It's just being grateful and thankful for everything you have and for other people in your life. And that has been scientifically proven to just improve your overall perception of your wellness and of your happiness, essentially, be meditation. And then empathy, a loving kindness, and seeing things from somebody else's point of view. I think we move about the world. I'll notice myself in a grocery store, and you are the main character, hopefully, to your own story. We all kind of want that. But looking around the world and seeing all these other main characters, that they're the main character in their story, and they have an entire universe, an entire series of experiences that you will never know the extent of those but appreciating that they struggle like you do and yes maybe they are angry that day but recognizing that typically anger is just sadness that had no place to go there's that level of empathy you've had so much sadness and yes it's coming out in this way that's impacting me in a not pleasant way but having that recognition i think that's when we can really start to especially in children really cultivate sort of a better a better world and I hate sort of saying that sounds cliche but building that ability to see other people clearly and have the awareness of how it's affecting you and then I think I skipped inspiration which is our creativity meditation that's my daughter's favorite and most of the meditations you get to create something in your mind so there's no restrictions on abilities on resources on anything you are free you are free and no one is there to judge you right? And hopefully something that you learn through a meditation and mindfulness practice is not to judge yourself. And that's, again, like a message that I try to reiterate over and over again is that there is no one else on the planet that you talk to more than you talk to yourself. Learning to be gentle with yourself and be nice to yourself and think of it like you're your own best friend. Would you talk to your best friend like that? Would you beat your best friend up for making a mistake? I hope not. So let's stop doing it to ourselves. And then there's a restoration meditation, which if you're having pain or an unpleasant sensation, it's sending energy, sending awareness to it and gaining some acceptance over it and knowing that most things are temporary and appreciating that in the moment. So that's a very long explanation of the sort of approach that we take to meditation. I love it. Just listening to you, I'm like, I'm already feeling calm and I feel like I'm already going through meditation. (laughs) So great. great. It's awesome. One thing I did when I started having my children, childhood experiences came out and me and my brother, we grew up in Ukraine. We were born right on the verge when Soviet Union was split. So there was like harder times for our parents. Some of the moments from our childhood could have been different, but we still appreciate what we have. But when I became a parent, I realized that some of those experiences that I experienced, how my mom was a single mom how she was raising us. I didn't want to translate it into my kids. I did this work, some meditation work, and helped me to become a better parent. That's why I appreciate meditation so much because it it relates to me so much. Mm -hmm. And one thing I remember I learned when you talk to yourself, right? Like self-love, when you think about yourself compared to your child, every time you see your child, you see love, you project that love to your child because that's the precious bundle of joy that you have. And sometimes people, yeah. when they look at themselves, that self-love that they can, they start beating themselves up. Oh, I'm not a good parent or I'm not good at this. What's wrong with me? I cannot do this or something like that. So you're kind of starting to beat yourself yeah. up, yeah. which if you look at yourself the way you look at your child, it makes total sense for you to talk to yourself the way you talk to your child. Does that make sense? To love yourself the, the way you do your child. That's why I love meditation. That's why I want to teach my kids those meditation techniques. And I really would like to try Zen. They see me doing meditations, but I'm usually wearing my headphones because I need to kind of zone in. But for them, oh my God, this device, I love it the first time I saw Because being screen free, being very accessible to them and it's a toy in a way but it's a very smart toy that can literally change their life change the way they see themselves the way they regulate themselves so i think it's huge potential to what you do thank you thank you so much i appreciate that 
That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. What I love so much about meeting you and, and meeting other people that are having their products are so wildly different, but at the end of the day, we're just trying to give kids the best tools to grow up and be adults that can then perpetuate the goodness. And we're learning. Every generation is going to have a like, oops, shouldn't have done that. Right. But I think we've come so far with that. Having people like you and, and your brother that are building these incredible gyms and, and these this giving kids an environment that allows them to stretch their physical abilities and build that confidence. What we're doing is is really building whole people that yes, we love them, but at the same time, we ask them to stretch and we ask them to take risks and and maybe do things that are out of their comfort zone. And I think the instinct is always to protect your child as much as possible, but that's not always the best thing. Finding these resources and these tools, and I love all of these companies that I'm a member of a founders group, and it's all parents who have started companies because they saw a need. And now there are so many resources to be able to do that. It's such an amazing thing, and it's so beautiful to see and you really can feel a shift starting to happen like there, it's a much more mindful way of raising children and, and seeing it from this holistic point of view where the body the mind and the spirit are all taken care of but not in a codependent overprotective helicopter parent yeah, kind of way yeah. it's a beautiful thing definitely raising the children it's a learning curve but it's a beautiful journey yeah. Yes, yeah, well, it is. Yeah. I feel very grateful yeah. to be on it. Thank you so much, Anna. <laughs> I had such a pleasure to you. So Thank you. It was lovely. Thank you so much for inviting awesome. me.